peace 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 good afternoon welcome to the fruitful lotus i'm sorry um like if there was a producer like that's the thing like i didn't do visual arts like in school like i went to a magnet middle school program what i am teaching naima robertson but the point i was going to make is i went to a magnet middle school it's in a magnet uh, music program and they had like all the visual program well i went for fifth grade um in elementary school um, and then I transferred to a middle school and I was supposed to go to a high school too, but, and I got in, I just didn't get in right away. And then I decided not to go. I wish I'd went and kept up playing piano and being in chorus and stuff, but I didn't. I am talking. <laughs> this is, um, another installment in my reflection of, um, the miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. I am sharing reflections that are primarily reflective of four dominant themes, economics, education, spirituality, and socialization slash um, political action. After I read the book, um, I well, as I read, I annotated. And then what I did is I took all of those annotated notes and put them into these brief statements. And so that I'm sharing them in different installments. Hopefully each video is no more than 30 minutes. So if you, you know, if on your lunch break or whatever, you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. If you find relevance to what I say, you can listen to some of the other ones. Hopefully it'll compel you to read the book for yourself and make some changes and really kind of look at um, what your perspective is and how you're dealing with it. And um allow you to grow through it um okay so that's that um all right so to so this particular so i'm going to share actually let me pray first um mother father god i thank you for this day i thank you for an opportunity to share um um another word looking at spirituality specifically looking at salvation and the renewing of our minds saving our souls from sin heavenly father you are so amazing and you love us so much Lord God, that you would not allow harm to come to us. I am so grateful, Heavenly Father, to be in your midst. I'm so grateful that you love me enough not to give up on me. Lord Jesus, I love you because even when I feel like I'm inferior and anyone else who may feel that they're inferior, Lord God, you have given us a superior identity because you made us joint heirs with Christ. And I'm just so grateful to you for that, Lord God. I believe, Heavenly Father, that this is the day that you have made, so I will rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, so um I am grateful to God for this day. Um, so this is really, really informal. And so yeah, I just realized I had some, I started, I thought I had cleared everything up, but um, did it. And so, yeah, but anyway, um, I'm grateful to God for this opportunity to share. I'm grateful to God for an opportunity to speak um, openly and candidly about things that may be challenging us with regard to our um um, spiritual and emotional wellness. Um, I am really, really um, just thankful for for every opportunity and everything. So, um, just that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I try not to take myself too seriously, and I hope you don't take yourself too seriously. And I hope you don't take, you know, I think you take the information, whether it's critique or whether it's insight. I hope you take that seriously. And it compels you to develop your own ideas and really go after them to the best of your ability. Um, but I make mistakes and I'm far from perfect. And I'm just grateful to God for any opportunity to share any measure of insight. I'm not even certain anybody is going to watch the videos, but I do hope to, um, I am going to post them. And, you know, if people listen and they hear it, I hope they hear something good. And if they don't, you know, that's, I mean... 
I think the message is good. So even if people don't think it's good, that's subjective. So it's your opinion. So, um, but that's that. So, um, okay. So here we go. Um, so I have the two reflection points that I'm going to share. And then what I'll do is I'll then, um, share the two scriptures that I wanted to kind of speak to. And then I'll kind of talk about my commentary. I'm um, share my commentary. Okay. So it says we must be taught to believe that salvation is a continuum of ongoing processes of mind and heart renewal through confession and repentance. The study of history and cultural identity may be facilitated, but it must be learned through the internal process of, um, Learning and questioning self in relationship to one's own purpose and the imposed shared purpose of dismantling injustice through the function of one's gifts and talents. So the thing is, if you're alive, Martin Luther King says injustice, like if, if there's injustice anywhere, there is injustice everywhere. So regardless of who you are, regardless of what your talents are, no matter what it is, you have an obligation to act to ensure that injustice is dismantled and we are functioning from a corrected perspective, um, corrected perspective. So that's what we're called to do. That's that's the call to action that Carter G. Woodson was putting out at this time. Um, He had a second message. He's like the study of history and cultural identity. Um, may be facilitated, but it must be learned through the internal process. Oh, I already said that. I said both of them. Okay, sorry. So basically, when you talk about my niece has a cat. Um, my niece has a cat, and he's here with me chilling. Um, um, and so my niece has a cat. And I used to think I was allergic, but as long as I started doing stinging nettles and I do them each day and I, it doesn't really bother me as much as I thought. Well, I think it does still, but I think it's just not in the same way that, um, not in the same way. So that's an aside. Um, but what I wanted to kind of speak to is W.E.B. Du Bois talked about double consciousness and he talked about you know, basically the dissection of person, um, the dichotomous self, where, well, he's looking at the dichotomous perspective, how the black man sees himself and then how society sees him. So then there is what you believe your purpose to be. And then there's what society requires in terms of progress and in terms of growth. So I think it's that same dichotomous, um, it's, it's still the same dichotomous dilemma, but just in a different context. And so I think that it's important. And I think that it's really, really critical to be able to explore, um, explore that kind of understanding and explore that purpose. And so, um, and so one of the things that I wanted to kind of deal with today, the scriptures that I wanted to do for this is come are coming from first Timothy chapter two, verse four, and then Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10. Okay. So first Timothy says this, um, in chapter two, uh, verse four, come on, uh, Tika, um, Tiki, sorry, Tiki is the cat's name. Um, so let's look at first Timothy, uh, chapter two, verse four, and it says this. Okay. Um, all right. So who wants off? Um, sorry, let me go back. I can't just start at two. I have to go back. So I'm gonna start at one. Um, start at three. This is good. Okay. Let me just start at one. Um, so this is first Timothy chapter two, verse one through four. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed at the proper time. Okay, I don't know if you heard all of it. Let me read it again. Um, it says, I urge then first all that... Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta move the cat. Okay, so you gotta scoot over Tika, Tiki because your, um, your nails are like, your paws are like scratching me. Okay, so it says, 
I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. So he's basically saying that everybody's entitled to salvation. Now, what happens is oftentimes we get caught up in regret and we get caught up in our mistakes and we start thinking like, oh man, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough and I'm not this. And so the idea is that it's a continuum. That regardless of whatever, you can, like, you still have a purpose. We still need you. We still, you know, you, when God, when God allowed you to have life, there was an, there was a function and a role assigned to your life. And so regardless of how you feeling in any given moment, it's still important that you recognize and accept that you have a critical part to play in terms of manifesting God's vision for the body of Christ. So, um, when, because Carter G. Woodson talks so much, like, I mean, so much in the book about the role of the church. I mean, the church has come under such scrutiny. I can tell you that I was one of the um, the purveyors of the scrutiny and, um, oh, well, the, the church is so big and it's this and it's that and it's this and it's that. When to understand its purpose, like what I realized is that I had gotten away from understanding the historical context. Yeah, I know. OK, you go to church, you do this. But to really understand what the inner workings were, I, I didn't I didn't. I didn't, it was out of ignorance and not having a clear understanding. And I'm not saying this now um, because I actually attempted to go to seminary and all this stuff like that. It's definitely not, be, it's really improved understanding because in all of it, I struggled. And so I talk about like with my writing, being able to reflect and see struggle. It's not about, oh, see struggle like in the environment, but see struggle with regard to these ideas that I'm grappling with that, you know, um, having, you know, having contrary feelings like, okay, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm supposed to be at peace, but I still get angry. You know, I know I'm supposed to be a good giver, but I still be like, um, I don't know if I want to share that. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I'm still looking and checking. You know, I'm still worried that somebody's going to steal from me. Somebody's going to take from me. So th these are contrary emotions that I thought would just be resolved. And I said, okay, I said a prayer of salvation and I'm good. So now I'm healed. And it doesn't necessarily work like that. It's a continuum, just like correcting miseducation. So not saying that, oh, okay, yep, yeah, that's good. Keep them self-hating thoughts. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that you are, if you are experiencing them, do not give up on the journey to self-actualization because you feel like it's taking longer than needed for your mind to be renewed or you to be redeemed or delivered from unhealthy thoughts because it's natural and it happens and it's not a reason for you to give up on yourself. And so I think that that's a critical piece for you to be able to understand and to work with, for us all to be able to understand and work with, because I know it's something that I have to work through as well. So um, that was that part. And so the second part of it in terms of saying education and how um, the study of history and cultural identity, it can be it can be facilitated, but it's really about how you process it. You have to internalize it. It's just like scripture. People can preach to you and they can tell you, you got to learn it. You can memorize it. But until you have those experiences that put you in a position, that put you in a position where you have to call on it and you need it in order to hold on to get you to the next phase, a lot of times it's difficult for you to really connect the way you need to. And so that that's kind of, and that's what I think that it was, you know, um, it, it was speaking about. And so when I use that scripture, I was saying like, God wants to save you. And so we are supposed to be in prayer. When you see someone struggling, it's not supposed to be just about, mm, well, they struggling. So how they've been in church and all this time and they still, and I, cause I've been one of those people, those ideas still come because it's learned, it's, it's learned behavior and I'm human and I'm flawed. Mm, you've been in church all that time. Are you still struggling with that? Really? Are you, do you really know God? Do you know? Who am I to say? Do I know God? You know what I mean? Because I because I know I'm like sometimes I don't feel like my prayer is doing what I'm thinking they need to do because I've been praying over this God and I've been praying over this and I've been praying over this and I still don't see a change. So it's about like reserving and refraining from judging anybody, understanding that we're all on a continuum. And if I see you struggling, rather than sitting back saying, oh, this is what you're not doing and judging you, I'm going to pray and I'm going to do my best to pray for leadership because, yeah, we could talk about you know, the challenges that President Trump has um, 
challenges of President Trump, challenges uh, of government in general, governor, whoever. But the idea is that we should be in prayer for leadership. Who, what, what, whoever, prayer for leadership of your household, prayer for leadership of your town, prayer for leadership at your job, prayer for leadership of your city, prayer for leadership of your state, prayer for leadership of our country, prayer for leadership leadership of the world, the United Nations, um, all of those kind of stuff. So all of those things are important. And so I think that that's some of, that some of, I, I feel like that's what, um, Car G. Whitson was talking about. He was just like, you know, we got to, you know, the church has to serve this function. You know, it's critical and we have to check, you know, we, you know, post reconstruction, it's important to know that, yeah, we might not be welcome in some of those spaces. And now that we are, we still have to understand the historical dilemma. If we're in that space and we're not using that space substantively, then we will find ourselves right back into the same thing. So you have to be able to, to, to function from a historical context with, with knowledge of the historical context in terms of exacting progress. And so in allowing education not to be just what is spewing at you and what people tell you, but allow the education to occur in how you process and then develop your own solutions and your own ideas and your own paradigms and your own worldview. I think that that's some of what's important and that's what um, Carter G. Woodson was really speaking to. Okay, and so the second scripture that I wanted to look at was in Ephesians. It's chapter Chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Okay. Oops, sorry. In chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Here it is. Ephesians. When I tell you, my niece has this cat that is the sweetest little kitty he's just like right there next to you um all right ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 for it is by for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by words so that no one can boast for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do so god has a purpose for your life God has a purpose for your life. Salvation was already granted and already designed because he know we're living in an imperfect world. So you don't have to worry about trying to earn it. You don't have to worry that this person got it, but you didn't because everybody's entitled to the same thing. We're all joint heirs with Christ. There's a function for you. There's something that God is calling you to do and he needs you to act on it and he needs you to do it. So um, we are made alive. We are made alive through Christ. And so it says by grace. It's nothing that you've done. It is by grace that we are saved. I have this poem and I said, you know, unlawful entry by grace. Because it wasn't a planned pregnancy. It wasn't a planned pregnancy. It wasn't a situation that I was just like, when I had my daughter, it wasn't that like, oh, I'm, it wasn't. But by the grace of God, God has turned that thing around. And when I tell you, it's forced me to look at myself and really deal with some issues and deal with some stuff because everything I check, you know, everything that I try to impart in her or I try to hold her accountable for, I have to hold myself accountable to. So if I'm not holding myself accountable to it, so I have a nine-year-old daughter. And if I'm not holding myself accountable to the same standards, she's going to grow up feeling like I'm a hypocrite. So if I say, uh-uh, Niaja, you, you know, find a solution to your problem, work harder, do this or do that, then I have to do the same thing. And so sometimes it's frustrating because, and, and I'm tempted to feel like, oh, I want to give up because, you know, this doesn't make sense. You know, this doesn't make sense to me or, you know, it's not working or it's not this. And, and then the moment I begin to genuinely give up, that means now I'm not just talking about when you get mad and I quit today. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you say, okay, well, I'm no longer concerned. I'm just not going to do it. And you begin to crucify your purpose and not just crucify, I mean, persecute and murder or kill or get rid of your purpose. Then that is when you blaspheme against God. And so there are some things that are inherently self. So there's a difference between suicide and self-sacrifice. All right. So self-sacrifice, Jesus was self -sac That was self-sacrifice. It was a willing, a willing surrender of his life for the, for the benefit of all of mankind. Water puts itself in front of the sun to be evaporated. So it's self-sacrifice for it to come back and water the grass. 
and provide and, and, and serve its function in the circle of life. So some of the sacrifice of self is needed. And even when you talk about Lord Jesus, allow me to decrease, let me kill and, and die to my desires so that the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit can be made more abundant within me. And so that's equal. So, so, you know, in this, we have to make the distinction between, you know, suicide and self-sacrifice. And I have to do it myself. Like, hey, if there's a problem or there's whatever, you know, I'm accountable. So, okay, what does that mean? What, what have I done? How can I stand, you know, how can I stand in accountability with regard to moving forward? So um, that's the part of, so, so that's important. Um, so let's see, I can actually go to one more reflection. Um, and it's this cultural education programs must include righteous exploration of mainstream subjects with regard to language, literature, mathematics, and science, but must responsibly delve into the study of spirituality, African folklore, philosophy through proverbs and cultural literature in the modern and postmodern era, um, eras areas. The institutions charged with the facilitation of such learning experiences must be supported and properly managed by way of development and financial self-sufficiency to uh, ensure sustained authenticity and subject contact and content and instruction. What he was specifically saying is that even when land grants were offered um, for historically black colleges and universities or whether they were at um, include for inclusion into predominantly white institutions, what he was saying is that, yo, if we don't, he was like, one of the biggest challenges, like, because he was like, what's the point of having an HBCU, but then the leadership of the president is white. He's like, well, if we are struggling to be self-sufficient because we can't raise the money we need to be able to maintain control of our own entity, entities, then we put ourselves at risk to be under the leadership of someone that may not have our best interest at heart, but has the ability to raise the money so that even if it's not a qualitative experience in terms of providing the education we need because they have the the access to get the quantitative resources they stay in power and we you know inadvertently not I mean I mean and we systemically stay in the same position because we are not self-sustaining and so he was saying you know making sure that we develop these cultural education purpose programs with intent and purpose to support them so as we are producing graduates our graduates are then giving back making sure that we are, you know, um, serving on the advisory boards, giving feedback, going back, and also making sure that it continues to grow. So that's one of the things that's important. And so again, growth is a continuum. I think that that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest takeaway. Growth is a continuum. So if you want to dismantle education, I mean, excuse me, if you want to dismantle miseducation, keep growing. Keep learning. Lauren Hill says on her Unplugged album, she was like, who's the same, who wakes up the same today as they were yesterday or will be tomorrow? You don't because you have to grow. And she's like, she's like, oh, people are like, oh, the money is changing. You're changing. She was like, I'm changing because it's a natural part of life. And it's true. You are going to grow. And guess what? You may make mistakes in that growth and it is okay. It is okay. Repent, receive forgiveness and keep moving. Repent, receive forgiveness and keep moving. Repent, receive forgiveness and keep moving. Because guess what? You are valuable to God. There is a purpose for your life. We need you and we need you to operate in your purpose. So therefore, black students must be developed with culturally centered functionality prior to college in order to seek out, create, and develop what is needed to ensure availability and access to culturally competent programs in and around campuses, whether HBCU, Ivy League, state, or church. So we have to have that discussion with our children and with our youth before they go to college. Like, hey, what do you, you know, what do you feel your function is? What do you feel you're good at? What are your talents? What are your gifts? How do you think that can contribute to a uh, um, ch change in society? What do you think you have to give to the world? How do you think you'll be able to make these changes? What do you want to do with your life? And so that way they're entering into, they're matriculating into college, not coming in there looking for a purpose and finding themselves, but having had a purpose. Now, does that mean that how they serve that purpose can't change? Absolutely not. If they're artists and they say that, well, my way, I, I am going to, and John Coltrane, I read, I saw this interview of him. It was with Malcolm X and I think it was on, um, I don't, I think I heard about it or read it on, um, uh, I think I was, it was referred to on WPFW, but then I ended up looking it up and reading it. And he was saying like one of the things, um, he was like, 
my contribution to the movement is my music. You know, so for he and Miles Davis, they redefine jazz, um, their ability, their work. I mean, I was watching this thing. Uh, I was watching this documentary on Netflix on Quincy Jones. Um, and it's just truly amazing. You know, what artists are able to do in terms of speaking to the sentiments and grabbing the hearts of people and moving them. Because there's sometimes that a ballad can communicate an emotion that words that if you just say it with words, you miss it. But the feeling when an artist on um, uh, Black Thought has a uh, Black Thought thought has this lyric on um he's like uh on on his song the water he was like because if you're real good at making music the listener feel like he living through it that's how my nigga do it i met slacks back in like 91 rapping and he talking about his friends and he, his friend that is struggling with an addiction but he's saying to him he was like yo this brother is so talented he is so amazing he is so bomb like yo i look up to you man we don't went from here we don't went to college we don't went to here people that slept on our talent and we're getting here and we're making it and you're missing out because you're not getting over your situation come on let's do this you know and so i think that that's the thing so sometimes we get caught up and we got get caught up in the situation and we go to feeling like yo you know i can't really do it or oh we get distracted not even it's not even about it's not like he was so strung out like he couldn't do it it was just like you know you get distracted and you start seeing because for a lot of artists i think they become disillusioned because they are living their life they're doing it and 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 then it's like it becomes like not about the love anymore it becomes and, and lauren hill on her lose myself it was and and, and marcia ambrosius um did a, a rendition of it as well um the whole thing is like i used to do it for the love a long time ago and all i ever wanted was love then somebody came around and tried to hurt me try to make me feel like i was dirty took pure love and um tried to make me uh, try to make me feel like i was unworthy took trip took true love and tried to make it dirty. The truth was they never did deserve me. So whether it's a whether it's a record label, whether it's the people you vibing with, whatever, you have a purpose and we need you to function in that purpose. And so if it's philosophy, whatever it is, like sometimes we shy away from that because it's like, oh, well, there's, you know, everything is about technical education because everything is STEM, 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 STEM. But if we're not looking at the philosophical paradigms that are shaping society, then we are leaving, we are leaving ourselves vulnerable to then also still having some sort of intellectual anarchy because there still has to be boundaries and parameters in terms of how the narrative is being directed and what we're talking about and how the dialogue is being engaged. So I think that that was kind of what he was alluding to even back then. I think it's still relevant now. And so that will probably, that will just sum up this particular installment and I will um, be back at you with another video and of a little bit. And um, and I hope, I, okay, so it's peace and love to everybody. Um, I love and appreciate you. I pray that you love and appreciate me as well. There is purpose in all that we're doing. God is good. God is able. And I just got to say, we are beautiful. And I know I said black students and I'm not shying away from saying black students. I also know that I said the N word. Um, and I know that is, can be offensive to some people. I am saying, well, no, I'm still dealing with healing, dealing with, um, dealing with healing within the black community. And not to say that other people can't come in and help administer healing, but a part of self-determination is being able to do for self. Their prayers on one of their albums is like, we do for self like ants in the colony, organize the wealth into a socialist economy, a way of life built off the com um, the comedy. All my comrades is ready. I'm just spreading the seed. Um, and that was on, and it was, you know, now it would be a discussion of what we look at as the school to prison pipeline or the prison industrial complex, um, prison industrial complex. So there are a number of issues we face, we're facing. Um, slavery doesn't just have to be about chattel slavery. It could be slavery of the mind. It can also be slavery through industrial complexes, whether it's political, whether it's the prison or the military um, industrial complex. So it's important for us to look at culturally responsible and culturally competent ways to develop in industry within society. Some of that being innovation. And a lot of that is what he talked about, like the innovative mind of the black, the innovative mind, the innovation of the black mind and our ability to be ingenious with regard to um, creating um and modifying life to make work more manageable. So let's, you know, let's celebrate that ingenuity. Let's not forget it and understand that we can continue it. So um, again, love and peace. Um, one love, all power to the people. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.